The principle of fail-safe defaults. Um, if you like, or if you've ever watched any of the old Cold War movies where the bombers are getting ready to attack, the bombers fly to a certain point and then they stop. And they cannot proceed beyond that point unless they are given a direct instruction to proceed. And they call those points the fail-safe points because that way if communication breaks down, failing, this, the, they will, the bombers will stay where they are and not attack. That's an example of fail-safe defaults. Fail-safe defaults in the computer world covers two things. The first one is, by default, deny access. Deny, deny, deny. Explicitly give permissions. That way, someone who's reading, the, who's reading a program understands exactly what permissions are being given. Furthermore, if you grant permission by default and then turn it off, well, you may forget to turn it off. We see this a lot when people leave companies. Often the, they leave accounts. The companies will leave accounts active for quite a while, even though the worker is no longer there. The second one, pretty much everyone knows that. Or I should say, that's the obvious statement of the principle. A much less obvious one is what happens when failure occurs. The system should always fail safe in the sense that when failure occurs, the system is just as secure as when this process that failed began. So in other words, in failing, you don't give away any information or privileges. Now here's a very good example of this. Your program is going to pass input to a second program that's going to act based on the input. And you have meta characters, single quote, double quote, dollar sign, exclamation point, question mark, and so forth. For example, the second program treats the vertical bar as a command separator, a pipe, for example. And letters, digits, and hyphens will not cause these special actions, and you know that. But those are the ones that as of now cause special actions. The question is, when you get a command typed from the command line, how do you sanitize it or make it safe before you pass it on to the second program? And the answer is to apply the principle of fail-safe defaults. Basically, what you do is instead of accepting characters and then checking to see whether or not any of them are in that list of meta characters, check to see if any of the if the only characters you have in the input stream are letters, digits, and hyphen. The advantage to this is if someone adds a new meta character, you know, for example, ampersand, you don't have to worry about it. Because you're not checking for ampersand, you're checking for letters, digits, and hyphens. This, in fact, did happen on a system at one point when a new meta character was added, the server didn't check for it because it didn't know that it had been added. And as a result, you could get into the system quite easily until the problem got fixed.